welcome to the second part of the chat with the foremans, Steve and Caroline. In the first part, we discussed about how to remain your spouse's best friend. And of course, we know that all our friendships originate in one source, God. God is the source of our love, of our friendship. And as long as we keep him as our best friend, so he's our number one. Really? Really? Your spouse is number two. As God's children, we know that that's the truth about this relationship, that we have our source in God. And as long as we keep drawing from him, strengthening our relationship with him, remaining best friends with God, then it flows that we can remain best friends with our spouses. In this discussion, the foremans talk about the two types of friendship, side-by-side -side friendship and face-to-face -face friendship. How does this work in the foreman's relationship? Come along to the chat with Steve and Caroline Foreman, part two. I quite like that one of side-by-side, -side, like mm -hmm. when you see each other relating with the children. Mm -hmm. So it's not all about me and mm -hmm. you, but even when, the other, when there are others, when there are children, when there are friends, mm -hmm. I see learning about each other and growing in friendship as we do new things together. I would say as well, actually, that I think I've seen having, you know, we have a number of couples that we're good friends with, that I would recognise well that it's okay to be different to mm -hmm. each other's couples and each other's families. There are, there are definitely couples that I know that getting um, what we may call a date night in weekly or fortnightly is really valuable to them. They, mm -hmm. That's something they prioritise, they get babysitters, they make that happen because they need that sort of ring fenced space okay. for them. Whereas much as we enjoy that, I don't think we have certainly over recent years sort of needed that in the same way. I don't okay. think it was fair to say. We enjoy each other's company alone and with others. Okay. And I think it's still important to make sure that you are, you prioritize that relationship above the other relationships, yeah. but it doesn't have to be separate from other relationships. So. I say, again, talk about something like going to the beach. You know, we go do that. It does me good. It, you know, we all go as a family, but that somehow invests in our relationship, even though the children and maybe other families are there, uh, yeah, there yeah, too. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. and, but I would say equally, for people who, for whom that sort of separate alone time yeah. is, is deemed to be needed, that's, yeah. that's good too. Yeah. And I, I think that the, the, you're right. It's a kind of funny thing, isn't it? Because there is a something really special and exclusive on one hand about your relationship with your husband and wife, but also you don't just want to be insular because I think other people bring different things out of us. And 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 I think appreciating that, you know, you can sort of see, oh, well, this other person brings this out of my husband or my wife, yeah. and and not kind of feeling like. Well, why don't I do that? Or why don't they? Why don't they? Oh, that right. So appreciate you're not yeah, just yeah. seeing it through your own kind of worldview, but like valuing yeah. the other individuals in yeah. in your life, really. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I think I, well, what you've said there makes me think of having uh, the interest of that other person at heart. So this, if this these people can bring out the best from, why don't I? then allow us interact with mm -hmm. these people. Yeah, in building the friendship, building that person up means that you're building your friendship by allowing her to interact with these other groups of people. Yeah, you yeah. do that a lot. You do that ah. a lot. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> encourage my relationship with okay, uh, yes, yes. wide range of people, friends, and like I keep bringing me new ones, and <laughs> you have a very large space for them, and not just large space, but you you also make yourself a part of it, you know, okay. making people feel really comfortable around us. Mm -hmm. And I I would say I think that's really valuable too in terms of it's not just like these people do my husband or wife good. I will let them go spend time with them. I will bring them into mm, our lives. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think at the time that we had a family recently come was last summer come to stay with us, which was very much sort of driven by me and my daughter. I don't know if you remember when we had friends come up from Leeds. Yeah. And that that initially I would say started as a friendship between my daughter and myself and the mum and their daughter, but actually they came as a family to yeah. stay with our family. Mm -hmm. And I think we were all blessed by that and I feel like there's a 
a sharing of lives again going on there, which is yeah. we are all part of this because when someone's friends with me, they're friends with Steve, and yeah, vice versa. And I think yeah. that's helpful. Yeah, and I think being part of a church is part of that as well because that's yeah. you know really exciting. You're you're a group of people and. You've made a, a commitment to one another to yeah. you know walk together and to serve God together, and so you are you are a you know you are individuals in that wider community. You are a couple and a family in that wider community, and I think kind of that's that's part of the. It's all in the mix, isn't it? In your, yeah. In your relationship and your your kind of friendship with one another. Yeah. Let me ask this. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this doesn't get annoyed, so <laughs> which in itself could be annoying. So. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, it doesn't get annoyed. <laughs> I, yeah, I, mean, I, I don't know whether it's uh, like annoy. I think you know sometimes our differences, you know, can probably be frustrating to one another, and some of that depends on you know how, how you're doing yourself when you're tired. Yeah. You know, things are are kind of more frustrating. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm sure because like I said we 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 are different, aren't we? And um, I think sometimes it's one of the things I was thinking of recently about. So I think Karen's mum is a gardener much more so than us. And I think sometimes she talks about weeds being just plants that are in the wrong place. And I've kind of been thinking about that about our, our like you know relative strengths and weaknesses. And sometimes our weaknesses are just strengths in the wrong place, aren't they? They're, they're kind of like <laughs> the things that you know can be good in one situation can be difficult in, a, in another situation. So you know I, I'm much kind of. I'm not particularly confrontational. I think you're, you're kind of naturally more... Um, confrontational. <laughs> I'm trying to be going nice with the word. I've forgotten the word. You know about it. And I think sometimes that's a good thing, isn't it? Because you're determined to see things fixed. Yeah. Sometimes you need to say, no, this isn't good enough. We can be better. Yeah. And so I, I think it's, it's about like... You know, when that is a, a kind of a good thing and a blessing, and other times it's just like, oh no, this is good enough. So I, I don't know. Yeah. Can you think of an example? DIY mission? Yeah, well, DIY. The home maintenance. Yeah, let's talk about home maintenance. So, so I think often, like lots of it probably falls to me yeah. um, more than, than you, but then Caroline is the one with the highest standards, so that I might, you know, sort of. Uh, I don't know, sand the, the door to prepare to paint it. Yeah. And I think, right, yeah. that's fine, that is good enough. And I'll come in and say that's not ready to be painted yet. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so I think, well, I'm the one doing the painting, you yeah. know, so yeah. like, surely I should get to set the standards. But, but she's right, because, you know, she understands. And, um, and, and so I think it's, it's things like that. Um, and particularly when it's things that don't energise yeah. us, then it could be like, oh, I've spent all morning doing this and it's yeah. not good enough. <laughs> But, but it's, it's not personal, isn't it? It's not like, oh, you know, someone's just trying to undermine my work or that, you know, you I'm not good enough. get to that point of feeling it's not personal? Like, this person is not attacking me. She's not saying I'm not good enough. Mm. Well, that really? sounds very kind. Really, or, or kind of the value of perspective. So again, my, like, my temperament and my gifting probably helps me to have that uh, a bit more I, I don't know and part of it is just trust isn't it that's that's the friendship thing that's the yeah. believing the best of one another yes. they're, they're not trying to undermine me it's mm -hmm. not because they think I'm terrible at this job they want the best and they don't want me to waste my efforts for it just to peel off because I haven't done the prep well enough mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. so if I push in a little more on that thing I'll say do you have you felt hurt I mean, if I buy something to say or something, you know, Caroline said in recent times. Um, no, I, I, I don't think so. But then again, you know, maybe it is that kind of sense of optimism of, um, I think we'll get kind of frustrated sometimes at, at, at times, but I don't know that I would say that I've been hurt necessarily. And, and certainly I, I can, not that I can think of, but then I think I'd move on quite quickly. Yeah, I think let down and disappointed. Okay. Yeah, probably. Yeah, 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 yeah. So frustrated if if we were in the kind of practical scenario okay. in terms of DIY or loading the car, you mm -hmm. know, that, that sort of is a, a frustration, yeah. of, um, which for me, I think, and again, I'm having to learn and still learning over the years that I have, I have a way that I see things can be done and therefore 
if they're not done that way, and I think, well, I don't understand why they're not done that way, because I can see that they could have been, yeah. then I can get frustrated. And it, I think learning two things. One is it, people don't all see the world as I do. <laughs> and so just because I've seen jobs that could have been done a certain way doesn't mean that's the only way. The only way to go. <laughs> or actually, that I don't. And I, it's the same with other people I've spoken to. Um, we've, we've used amongst our church friends, haven't we, the phrase of someone who is a doer, somebody who can yeah. do yeah. tasks. And recently we were talking amongst some friends and we were saying, right now, how do you help someone in your house? You know, and you say, learn to see the jobs that they see. Because there are certain jobs that I see you doing and somehow my children can walk through a room and not see all the things that you're picking up. That sounds like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Everything is perfect. Uh, do you not see this? And it's, it's taken me a long time and I'm still learning to see it actually Steve, it's not that he doesn't, you know, so even something like the DIY things of thinking, well, why is that not to this level? He hasn't actually known what he's looking for or doesn't doesn't see it as I see it. Yeah. Um, so that's, I think, where frustrations creep in. Mm-hmm. But so when you talk about laid down, is that point to it? I think that can be um, more emotional yeah. things. Yeah, I think so it's emotional thing that, that are kind of um, can come at a time of feeling unsupported in something whether that um we, we talked recently about sort of a, sometimes for me it's an absence of something and again we it's something we talked about recently in that and actually we have to help each other see these things that maybe there are times when i did something or i needed some help and steve didn't step in and help me or um and then i felt let down um and again i think and I'm someone who, Steve would move on very quickly from that. I'm someone that, if I'm not careful, that can stay and I can build up an inner conversation that I need to be yeah. careful of. That Some things are, A, people make mistakes. So actually, because uh, sometimes I think we can think of thinking the best, which is, oh, maybe they didn't mean to. Or maybe they, actually, we're, we're humans. Mm-hmm. And we, we're full of human beings and we, we get things wrong. We're too tired. We're selfish. <laughs> you know, all, all these yeah. things, which is, Maybe so, I needed help and Steve didn't help me. He, he either didn't see it or actually maybe he just didn't have that energy or whatever it was. And I don't know. Either I'm, I'm responsible for myself. And so actually I think a marriage is an interesting one because in an ideal setting, we are one another's advocate and we help one another in all the ways that we can. Yeah. But they're not obliged to. <laughs> and I think I had to learn that. But actually the idea would have been he would have helped me. Okay. The reality is he didn't. And that's okay. <laughs> you can be let down. Let, let down does happen. It's what you do with that feeling. And if we go back to the sort of picking your battles scenario, yeah. I think I have a choice in that scenario, which is, is the battle just in my own feelings? And I just need to say, I was let down. I forgive him. I move on. I'm not going to let that be something that dwells. Yeah. Or is it, like I mentioned before, is this something I, I'd quite like him to say sorry? <laughs> <laughs> may or may not sort of but it's okay to go back to your spouse um maybe not in the heat of the moment but just to say oh yesterday when that happened mm-hmm. i did feel a bit let down and that's the opportunity for them to say i didn't even notice I yeah. um, i'm really sorry and again something we've learned to work through is and i still don't know that the, the total when when you do one or the other but sometimes it's okay to say, I didn't see, I didn't notice, I'm sorry that you were let down. Yeah. Not even, I'm sorry I did something wrong. <laughs> yeah, 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 you were let down. Yeah. And again, because I'm someone all about standards. You bring a bit of comfort. Yeah. I'm sorry you were let down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It brings a bit of comfort, but maybe not as comforting as I'm sorry I <laughs> yeah. did. Yeah, yeah. And, no, that, and I think that's what I that actually, I don't know that there's always a when you do one or the other, because yeah. actually, if they didn't see it, yeah. then... I'm not sure they're in the wrong, <laughs> um, <laughs> albeit we'd love them to see it. Um, mm. And that's part of the chance to be friends. Mm. Um, and equally, it's sort of, I would be more looking for that. I'm sorry I was wrong. <laughs> and again, I think we've worked on that over the years and that I need to step back from pushing for that yeah. and take the sorry that comes. Because ultimately, uh, there, there are very few things that are hard and fast right and wrongs. There are a lot of ideals. Um, and so I think they sit within the letdown. It's it's learning to be friends, isn't it? But ultimately, mm-hmm. I think I need to be the one that's responsible for my feelings, mm-hmm. which is, 
Okay, I was I was let down. Let, let's move on. Well, all the other friends do let us down. Yes, we move on. Yeah. Yeah. We are friends. We make yeah. excuses for them. Yeah. So there's that place of making excuses mm-hmm. for my husband too. Mm-hmm. That, like you said, we're human. Yeah. And yeah. we make mistakes. So and if he let me down, I, what do I do when my other yeah, best absolutely. friends let me down? And I let go. And, and and I think part of it is that kind of perspective about the. That I'm not the star of the show. You know, it doesn't yeah. all have to revolve around me. Yeah. This is not the Steve show, also featuring Caroline, that everything has to be filtered through how I feel about it or what it looks like to me. Yeah. And that actually the, the most successful approach, I think, in a marriage is to focus on how can I bless the other person yeah. and invest in them rather than, well, how is, how is this feeling for, for me oh, that yeah. it's not all about me? Yeah. Again, Caroline and Steve. Well, I say Caroline, I say Kaz, so it's interchangeable. <laughs> yeah, thank you. So, thank you very much. And um, I, I would have said our guests, but we are the guests <laughs> of my dear home. But we're speaking to Steve and Caroline Foreman. They are friends, uh, church, we're church members together, and they are also our city group leaders in our church. We have what we call city group, that's the small groups so they have been our city group leaders for nearly 13 wow. years look how long we've been coming as you've been talking about you've given a lot of examples about still helping you still helping you so if i'm looking at the five love languages it appears to me like acts of service is very high on your i don't know maybe over time i think I w- historically i wouldn't have said no. it was but that's inter- an interesting reflection somehow connect them with being thought about mm-hmm. because I think it's actually it's acts of service in things that I find hard so I don't have it related I haven't read the love languages things for a while because yeah. actually acts of service would have been high up yours back in the day when we'd sort of read through them because we see that in that you do a lot of running around after us mm-hmm. for me I think it's when I'm finding things hard oh, yeah. having someone come in and step alongside me oh. How do you recognise triggers, your triggers? So I, I think you're good at doing that. I think, like, again, probably over time and, you know, the experience of living with me for 20 years, <laughs> you, you sort of identify, like, when, I don't know, you're getting frustrated by something that I'm doing or not doing. And I think I've learned to mm. not get well, more and more wound up. You know, that's fair? Yeah, I, I think so. I think so. I think for me it is sort of a, a trigger as in a, a point of conflict yeah, yeah. Um, for me it is it's i think if, if a sort of lack of connection if i feel that either we are not on the same page or something <clears throat> or i'm not being understood and that's something we've learned over the years which is actually not being understood is sometimes the fact that i'm not understand i'm not getting the reply i expect and that doesn't actually mean i'm not being understood yeah. mm-hmm. it means that Steve does understand. He yeah. doesn't necessarily want to. Yeah. to yeah. Well, yeah. Doesn't yeah. share my opinion. Yes. Okay. Because sometimes yeah. I feel like I'm not being understood because Steve's not saying no. You're right. But that, yes. that is the <laughs> that happened this morning. <laughs> <laughs> this morning you said you you, 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 you didn't acknowledge that. Yeah. You didn't acknowledge what I said. You yeah. didn't say. He said, but <laughs> I was responding to you and we were discussing it. I said, but you didn't necessarily yeah. say it was a good idea, so I didn't know. What yeah. <laughs> Clearly you didn't understand because if you understood you would have said yes, what a brilliant idea. That's the only kind of the only reason you're not agreeing is because you don't understand. Yeah. And then, but again I think we've learned over the years and are still learning. So again it sort of I'm probably more vocal and for that I think um, and again our pastors used a really helpful phrase in those ones, which is about turning volumes up and down. And they were saying that and I think this sort of even goes back to sort of, you know, our, our lives growing up that sort of I'm sort of have a greater range of volume in my opinions of things and so if I feel very strongly about something yeah. then I would get sort of louder or longer about it yeah. and um, whereas so my volume might go from naught to 100 or something and Steve sort of poodles somewhere between 20 and 25 regardless of how strongly he feels about it mm-hmm. um, but that can mean that I'm looking for an enthusiastic response okay. Um, and actually Steve has responded and he has said, yes, that's a good idea. But it wasn't a, yeah, that's a brilliant idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
And again, I think, coming back to the sort of friendship thing, it works both ways. So one is that I, I got a yes, it was a good idea. I, I should be grateful for that. Mm-hmm. And I think I've been encouraged about that. Actually, that just needs the volume turning up on it a little bit. Mm-hmm. In my own, what I hear. Yeah. Then when Steve has said it, yes, that's a good idea. Then maybe it just needs to sound louder to me. And equally, I think you take, you've learned that, oh, actually, just maybe I do need more of a, a kind of a, an out, a clear yeah. answer. Yeah. And a, I think that's, that's true. You're just in kind of acknowledging you. But, you know, again, I, I sort of remember talking to a pastor a few years ago and sort of, I suppose reflecting that I was fairly self-contained, self-sufficient, content, and sort of recognising that as, as quite a strength, really, which which it is. But equally, when you have other people and friendships, whether it's with your wife, whether it's with, you know, your pastor or people that you pastor, actually, they want to know, how can I help? They want to be able to help. They want to know what's going on inside. Mm-hmm. And so, again, what, what I was perceiving as a, a strength, that actually I need to be intentional about, say, about kind of being more oh, open oh, uh, about oh. because other people need that to be able to connect and support and help yeah mm-hmm. how do you avoid those triggers i think for me again because i'm quite cognitive it's probably all all internalized probably <laughs> yeah. you, you know it's probably you can't see anything on no, the on the yeah. surface i think i think it's learning to communicate not being ruled by your emotions and again it's something we've had to work out because because on the whole we do you think the best of one another and that, that actually I think if anything we've been guilty of, which is brushing things under the carpet sounds too sort of blase about it, but we we'll, it's been a long time since we've really fallen out, if you like, but we'll see something that we've maybe want something that has bothered one another or something we haven't have or haven't done, and we may start to discuss it. I'm probably the one that gets a bit more emotive and frustrated. Or just sort of it isn't the time to talk about it. And again, that's recognising one another that, that sometimes it's, you know, life, life happens. And, you know, there are very few things that need to be solved there and then on, on the spot. But it is important to acknowledge that it's happened. Mm-hmm. And so we might say, Look, I'm really sorry that it would be good to come back and fix this. But I need to go to work or I need to. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, you've been, Steve's very good at not just saying, oh, it doesn't matter. I'm going out. But he can say it. I'm not sure I can deal with that now. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, that's important that I take that. Mm-hmm. Um, no, he comes back to it. He does come back to it, although we're probably both guilty of, actually, almost that was good enough, and we'll just move on. Yeah. <laughs> not in a, oh, I don't want to come back to it. We're not running scared. Mm-hmm. But actually, the next day comes and things happen. And I'd say 90% of the time, that's fine. You know, we the moment has gone. Um, yeah. But I think we've had to learn now at times to go back to something because we've recognised that that there aren't many things, I would say, between us that are biggies, if that makes sense. Even in our early years, they're just little things that have nagged and sort of got away. But I think actually um, recently we sort of sort of talked about stuff that you think, well, I realise actually they've layered up mm. the, the one or two, you know, we go back to the, the sort of trivial example of maybe bags in the hallway, that... Actually, if that was something that really bothered me, yeah. and every time I chose to just take it on the chin and go, and that's yeah, that's good, and with God, I can let things go. Yeah. But actually, sometimes they it's good to talk about. They they yeah. layer up and layer up and layer yeah. up, and um, I think there's a difference as well between oh, what that annoyed me in the moment, and someone needs to say sorry, and that's good, and we all feel okay about it. And actually, what could we do different next time? Yeah. Um, and I think that's a harder one to come back to for us, particularly for trivial things. Mm. Because let's face it, we've got out on the day, we've left the bags, yeah. we've all gone and we're all fine. Do I really three days later want to come back to, <laughs> do you know what you should have done? <laughs> because it, it feels like it makes a big deal about it. Mm-hmm. But I think occasionally that, that's a good thing to do. Okay. You know, most times I would say, just keep going. Yeah, right. occasionally it's a good thing to do. Mm. And I do say to Emmanuel, we're going to come back to this point, yeah. not because I've not um, got over it, but to see what we can learn mm. from it yes. and to see yeah. how we can stop it happening mm. another time. So, mm. so don't think, oh, why is she bringing it back yeah. into mm. this later? But this is not the right time for us to talk and about. I think something I've had to learn is to detach the emotion from that and try to detach that from the, the action, but equally sort of saying, well, the action does affect how I feel. And actually, what, when Steve does X, Y, or Z, you know, all the other way around, when I do something to see that it can affect how we feel and that 
even if the action itself isn't wrong it can do good or bad to another person yeah. and so it's okay to talk about that mm -hmm. um, but in terms of the triggers thing i think it's i think most of the time it's a case of can we just leave this here mm -hmm. but agree not in a sort of oh just leave it doesn't matter mm -hmm. i think it's really important not to say to one another that doesn't matter because it might matter to the other person yeah, yeah. um but actually because we value the other person we're not going to hammer at home there and then yeah. Yeah, we need to come back to it Thank you very much. See you later, guys. It's been lovely to have this peep into your friendship, <laughs> which you've always admired.